Hi, I'm Sandy Hirschlein, welcoming you to another Siemens How to Drive video with the goal of helping you better understand and work with Siemens variable frequency drives and related motion control products. In this episode, Product Marketing Manager Raphael Larcher is going to show you how to install Synamics G120C and G120 modular drives outside control cabinets using Siemens UL Type 1 wall mount kits. Pay close attention to what he says about the main differences between NEMA 1 versus UL Type 1 kits that have been certified according to the new standard UL 61800-5-1. Hi there, Raphael Larcher here. Have you faced a situation where you had to expand the equipment and install a new variable frequency drive into an existing control panel just to find out you don't have enough space inside the cabinet? How about trying to replace a failed VFD that is no longer available in the market inside a panel or a motor control center? You then find a replacement unit but realize the new drive footprint won't fit. An easy and inexpensive solution for such retrofit scenarios or any new installation in a commercial or industrial facility is the use of a wall mount kit that enables drives to be installed outside the control cabinet. In this video, I'm going to show you how that can be accommodated with Cinemax wall mount kits. These are indoor UL Type 1 kits available in seven different sizes covering the entire range of the Cinemax G120C and G120 standard performance drives with power module PM240-2. For today's demonstration, I will go over the installation of two wall mount kits, size number 2, which holds drives up to 10 horsepower or frame size B, and kit size number 5, which holds drives up to 50 horsepower or frame size D. It's important to point out that both the Cinemax drives and these wall mount kits have been designed, independently tested, and certified according to the new UL standard for drives, UL 61800-5-1 as well as the standards for enclosures UL50 and UL50E. That basically translates to a higher level of product and personnel safety while reducing hazards in end installations. Below this video is the link to the UL online certification directory in case you want to verify Siemens compliance for such products. So, in order to prevent any code violations and comply with OSHA and NEC installation requirements, the enclosure or kit must be rated at least UL Type 1 and not simply NEMA 1. If you want to know more about this topic, also below this video is a link to a white paper we wrote about this topic and the differences between NEMA and UL rated enclosures, along with the benefits of having products certified according to the new UL 61 800-5-1. Okay, let me show you how to install this kit. As always, make sure to follow the safety and installation instructions provided with the units to avoid any accidents or injuries. I have a Cinemax G120 frame size A, which requires a size 2 wall mount kit, and also a G120 frame size D, which requires a size 5 kit. The kits themselves consist basically of a metal front and back cover that are put around the drive, four screws to tighten them together, and a plastic insert that goes in this front cutout to prevent access for the control unit cabling. Let's start with the smaller kit first. We will set aside this front piece, the M4 screws, and the control unit cover for now as we'll be installing the back unit first. The back unit comes pre-drilled to match the drives, drill patterns accept. So per the installation instructions, the drill pattern for the drive we're going to be using today, frame size A, is these three holes using size 8 screws. We would simply mark the surface where the units will be mounted to and drill the holes using either self-drilling screws if mounted to a metal surface or concrete screws if mounted to a masonry wall. I used self-drilling screws for this metal plate. We don't have to tighten the screws all the way down at this point. Just enough so they hold the kit in place. Then we can position the drive and proceed with tightening down all screws per the torque requirements in the G1 installation manual. 
Now that both the back cover and the drive are secured in place, the next step would be to knock out the required conductor holes at bottom and connect the required cables and cable glands to the drive. We will skip this part on this video. Once all cables are properly connected for both power and control wires, the next step is to put on the front cover by aligning the bottom retaining lugs on the base inserts and tilting it until we get to the top lugs into the cutout. Once they are secured, we can then use the M4 screws to tighten the front and back cover together per the torque requirements. Next, let's insert the control unit cover by simply placing it in the insert and pushing it until it clicks in place. Last, let's make sure the warning label that comes with the G1 is attached and visible on the side of the kit. And that will be it! Note that no additional clearances are required on top or bottom, only the appropriate cable bending radius at the bottom of the kit. Now let's install the kit size 5 with this 50 horsepower G120 frame size D. The process is similar, but this kit has four pre-drilled holes to secure the base itself, in addition to these four pre-drilled holes that match the drive's drilling template. We again begin by marking the surface where they will be mounted, Set the kit aside and using size 10 self-drilling screws, go ahead and drill the holes. I'll go ahead and insert all 8 screws, but we'll leave them sticking out about half an inch so there's enough surface area to catch both the kit and then the drive. Next, position the base bracket into place. Now it's time to bring in the G120. Align the top mounting holes with the screws and carefully insert it in place. Make sure the bottom lugs are positioned correctly as well. Once in place, tighten all 8 screws as per the torque requirements in the G120 installation manual. And now that both the back cover and the drive are secured in place, the next step would be to knock out the required conductor holes on the bottom and connect the cables and cable glands to the drive. Again, we'll skip this part for this unit. Once all cables are properly connected, the next step is to put on the front cover. Align the bottom retaining lugs with the base inserts and tilt it upwards to place the top lugs into the top cutout. Once secured in place, we can then use the four M5 screws to tighten the front and back covers together per the torque requirement. Next, insert the control unit cover and push it until it clicks in place. Final touch, make sure the warning label is attached and visible on the kit. Remember, no additional clearances are required on top or bottom of the unit, only the applicable cable bending radius and the minimum side-by-side -side distance is 2 inches, which is exactly what we have here. And that's it for installing the Synamex wall mount kits. Thank you, Raphael. If you'd like more information on Synamex UL Type 1 wall mount kits, a good place to start is usa.siemens.com slash ul-1-kits. Thank you for watching, and please drive carefully.